we're doing this, we're committing <laughs> to it. Make that noise and then instantly drink water. <laughs> you can't make me laugh while I'm trying to drink something. I'll drown. I didn't think that was going to go well. I didn't. <laughs> laughing i can't keep going <laughs> I'm not... coming. thanks for listening watching <laughs> <laughs> hello if you expected any of this to be like a serious chill podcast you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> serious oh no 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 that's not happening in this podcast hi i don't know what that is oh that's a character <laughs> hi welcome to star-crossed losers it's us hi we're the losers <laughs> Yeah, if you did crossed. If you don't understand what the heck just happened and what those noises were, it's kind of a running gag since we were roommates back in college. What what is it that you like to call that fury? Oh, these are the mildly concerned caveman noises. I believe it was whenever you would come home and I was doing anything at the apartment anywhere, you would ask if I was home and I would instantly go. Hoo. <laughs> that was my response. I love that that's kind of the code that we established. It it, it t- turned from us saying hi into just, ah! It's really all you need to, like, I confirm know. that you're home. Just the sound. Yeah, make a sound if you're here. And, ah! Yeah, preferably a sound with your voice, because if you just make a sound of things falling down, that makes me more concerned, not mildly <laughs> concerned. It's either a mouse and, or I mean, it's somebody breaking in. Are, are we not all just cavemen living in a cave with mildly concerned dispositions? I know, I'm I'm mildly concerned all the time. It's called anxiety! hey Depends on I'm the time. I'm mildly concerned about humanity at all times. I'm mildly concerned about the world. Always. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> very concerned. Like, sometimes I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's chill? Maybe it's it. And other times I'm like, no, no, it's not I. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's not I. I don't like this. I want to go home. I want to go back to my cave. <laughs> I did not consent to any of this. <laughs> no. Anyway. Who are we? Star yeah. crossing. Who are you? Who who the heck are these talking voices? Yeah. Who who is this? <laughs> Hi, I'm Star Crossing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fury. <laughs> That's all you're gonna get. No. <laughs> said, you, you'll learn the rest about us as we go on. Yeah. We are, uh, I guess we could talk about how we know each other, like... Yeah, what was... I joined choir in college, and I was like, I need a friend, and I saw her, I think she was wearing a nerdy t-shirt, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. <laughs> I know, we were, yeah, we were in the same section, we were both altos, and I remember you had your really cute hat on. I was like, yeah, oh my god, she hats. looks fun. Yeah, I was like, she looks fun, she looks cool. And you were like, super nice, and I was like, let's be friends. And then we found out we lived, like, and then we were, on like, the same floor. Yeah, on the same floor. I'm like, oh, well, I guess that was fate. Yeah, I know. We, we found out we live on the same floor. And then I think it was, like, what really started, like, me considering you my friend was when you guys invited me to your room to marathon the first, like, what was it, like, the first yeah. five Pokemon movies. That was fun. Such a good idea. I'm so glad that I don't even remember why I decided that was going to happen, but I was like, yeah, I have all of the Pokemon movies. Let's watch it. Come to my dorm room. That was I also really had the fun. TV. I think, I think it was because I, I don't think anyone else in like the people that were becoming friends, um, I was the only one that really had a TV in the room. And so I was able to host that. And by the way, I hate hosting. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a like stroke of luck that any of that happened. That was a tiny dorm room, too. Like, our dorm rooms were not very big. But yeah, I think I remember, like, what was it, like, four of, four or five of us? Because then, like, you had one of your friends over, and then it was us and yeah, your roommate. Yeah, I remember, I don't remember if any of your friends came in. I think one of our friends did. I don't remember, did. there were a lot of people there. It was just anyone who liked Pokemon, and I was just like, yes, I need to make new friends. Let me do this um, judging thing. If you like Pokemon, you have made one of the marks. You are now off to the next level of me judging you if you're a good friend. I think that's how I've, like, met most of my, my, like, closest friends who I still have. You and then my other best friend from college is, like, actually, you know what? All of my best friends, because my best friend from high school, not high school, middle school, 
Um, we met because we're both Jonas Brothers fans. That's how we both became like really close friends. And now we've been friends ever since. But yeah, my one of my other best yeah. friends from college, we bonded because I found out that she was a huge Doctor Who fan. And I was also at the time like going through a really big Doctor Who hyperfixation. And so, like, there was, like, the one weekend that my, my very first roommate had her boyfriend over, and I just, like, I was like, ah, I'm gonna kind of stay away because this is, hmm. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Not just. subtle. Yeah, my, my best friend was like, yeah, no, you're coming to crash in my room because my roommate also is, like, gone all weekend, so she won't care. And I was like, okay. And my excuse to my roommate was, we're gonna go have a Doctor Who marathon, so I'm gonna just sleep in her room because we're probably gonna be up till, like, 4 a.m., Oh. Yeah, I got really lucky with my my first roommate. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were both pretty much on the same page with, well, inviting people over or going to bed. We were very, yeah, we, we became good friends. Yeah, you had some really cool roommates. I mean, I also had, like, yeah. roommates yeah, that... Like, yeah, that, that star person, that, that, was, that was one of the best ones. <laughs> I mean, that's not Actually, what I meant. That was one of the lowest, that, that was lowest tier. Like, that one barely made it through. <laughs> I mean... Fair. You know what? That's fair. She's, she sounds like a jerk. She kept doing my dishes for me. Your dishes? <laughs> I know. How dare she? She kept doing my dishes for me. And I, I'm like, you know, I don't think I can live with someone who's nice to me. We were friends from freshman year. Hung out because we were both major nerds. And also we were in choir together for a while. We were in and choir. Then... And then we found out that, oh, oh, you also like to write. Oh, you also like yeah. to just be dorky in general. Okay, well, we, this could happen. Yeah, I remember, like, the whole writing thing, I think, is, like, a, the, the biggest thing we had. Oh, and then Halloween freshman year was so fun. Oh. I don't remember it. Oh, man. Maybe I do, but I don't remember what year it happened. That was, I think, I think you were, I, I swear to God, I have such a weird memory of these kind of things. Uh, I dressed, you remember I- Was I Bellatrix? Maybe. You were a witch of some kind. I think that was when our other friend dressed up as, like, a wolf? Is that right? I dressed- oh, heck if I know. I dressed up as a Newsy boy. I remember that. Yes, that was the first Halloween. I do remember you dressed up as Newsy, and that that was one of my, like, first, like, core memories of you. I'm like, okay, she likes Newsies. <laughs> oh, was... She likes musicals, and Newsies is her favorite. Like, that just <laughs> stuck with me. I'm like, if I ever want to please her, this is the kind of, like, media that I can pull from. <laughs> Did you know I was a theater major at the time? Because, like, that was, I'd say, that was literally, like, Honey, my degree. It took me forever. Like, I want to say, even after I graduated, I still wasn't sure that you were, I, I had known you were a theater major, but I kept forgetting, because I'm like, nah, Star was just someone that existed at college. I have, she, she didn't <laughs> actually have a major. She just was, like, there to be a good friend. <laughs> I'm just there She as was a there to person. have, like, the whole interest yeah but i also spent so much time in like the music hall because we were in choir and like do- yeah, and I, was I think in voice i lessons. had just assumed that you were a, a music major because of that was the main connection that i had to you for for studies i think and sometimes time. i'm like maybe she's an english major because like she also does some english <laughs> classes i don't know that was oh my gosh yeah that was funny because so many people thought i was an english major because of how much time i spent in the english building and I was like, I'm actually just a creative writing minor, but... I mean, if yeah. creative writing was a major, I would have, like, double majored big time. I think, actually, you know what's right? so funny? I think when we met, I was still a music double major. I was insane for thinking that was a good idea, because, like, I didn't realize how much, like, extra stuff I was gonna need to do to get a music degree. Yeah, you have yeah. to take this many classes of theory, you have to take ear training, science thing, you have to take piano, you have to do all these things, and I'm like, ah, no thanks. Yeah, I was just a music minor, and that was good, and then I met all of the, like, electives and everything that I needed to for that, and I was really stressed, like, in college classes were like demanding a lot from me oh, and so yeah. I was like I think I have to like I'm not really getting anything out of choir this year so I think I do need to drop out of choir just to give myself some time to like actually handle all this homework and workload and everything I also lost my scholarship by doing that and then I also was not allowed to take voice lessons if I wasn't in choir, so I lost voice lessons too. That was a really, really tough year for me. I hated that year. That year can die in a fire. I don't, I know, it's weird. I wish, the other thing I wish is, like, you could choose what, like, I, well, I don't know, was it a requirement to be in, I thought it was a requirement to be in choir specifically, but I was like, it was it that or to be in an ensemble period? Because I was like, 
I think it was that you had to be in choir for voice lessons. Yeah. I, I understand, like, you should totally be in an ensemble, like, to understand, like, you know, it's not, it ain't all about you, sister. I get that. Because a lot yeah. of soloists, learn, that's... Learn about teamwork and not, not be cocky. Yeah, because with soloists, that's something that can absolutely happen, and maybe that was just because I watched a that lot of Glee. commonly, yeah. It's yeah, so... <laughs> those were stressful, too. <laughs> the, the amount, it's so funny, like, looking back, it's like, I'm supposed to be a theater person? I'm supposed to be an actor, I'm supposed to be so comfortable on stage, but auditions and recitals, singing solo in front of oh, people, I love doing that. I'm terrified. My anxiety, like, the I only... physically, like, curl in on myself. I'm so scared. Yeah, I think the only thing that really held me back from actually pursuing a theater major or, like, going into drama is that I don't like having to memorize lines. I'm sure, like, you know, after a while I'd get over that, but I'm like, I don't like it, so nah. Monologues are hard I love acting, though. Yeah, I'm I've an learned... ADHD ambivert. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned improv is, like, I actually really enjoy it. I'm, I'm not, like, the best at it. I'm getting better, but, like, it's something I really have fun doing. Because you're, like, always, like, it's it's a very, very creative, like, acting in general is a creative art form, but when you're doing improv, you are in the creation at the moment. Like, everything you are just making as you go, and that is a lot of fun, especially if you get into flow state. Oh, yeah, man. time flies, and you are enjoying it. I know. Maybe that's, I think that's why I love Dungeons & Dragons so much. Because I yeah. learned, like, it's the perfect balance for me between improv, like, built, like, you can make your own characters, and it's a pretty established world that the Dungeon Master creates, and, like, the lore is kind of already made up, but you get to, like, move forward with the world and the story with your character in your own improvised way, and I love that about it. Yes. And especially if you have a good um, Dungeon Master, they will give you the room to breathe and the room to explore your character and their world and the plot and it's just an experience yes that's if been you have really a good fun. like game master <laughs> that's been really fun yeah oh man you know what what i learned like watching those was like the react channels like the try not to sing along try not to dance kind of ones um, yeah. i've tr like i tried that on my own time with like certain songs i really like and i was like this is actually like painful i'm not enjoying this at all right i don't ever want to do this because i would it's lose like, <laughs> it, instead of it being called try not to do this thing it's try to be bored try not to feel joy <laughs> exactly i'm like okay this isn't this isn't fun anymore it's not supposed to be fun it was really it's called try not to have fun and i don't like to not have fun <laughs> i like being fun i like having fun life should be fun because we only get one come on it rhymes so it must be true <laughs> there you go welcome and thanks for watching uh listening what what <laughs> Oh my gosh. Welcome to Thanks for Watching. <laughs> Welcome to Thanks for Watching. <laughs> I've had two cups of coffee. You would think, there's no excuse. You would think I'm functioning by now, but no. <laughs> I've had ADHD my entire life. What? Yeah. Yeah, I need to get tested. I don't need coffee. I have my own inside of me. <laughs> I need to get tested one of these days. Yeah. I was, I was, Join at, a, me. I was at a writing group. I think group. you're pretty much confirmed i oh no i'm pretty sure no i i joked at one of my writing groups last week and this guy was just like do you self-medicate and i was like does being an absolute freaking nerd and spending hours a week watching critical role count then yes <laughs> yeah i got i got back into that obsession after comic-con like i i kind of took a break from watching critical role and then after comic-con i like super hyper focused on it again i've never watched it but it's on my list of things to so like hey maybe you should check that out sometime <laughs> It's, oh gosh, if you actually, like, watch it, it's, like, hours of your time. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the main things that's stopping me, because I'm like, that's a lot of time, and I'm not into it yet, so I don't know if it's worth my time. I'm oh, that's, sure it would be fun. That is totally fair. See. That's kind of, like, so when I got COVID, like, last year, back in May, and, like, there was a time this last winter that I was sick, like, for, like, a week, and then I got better, and then, like, two weeks later, I got sick again, and then I was sick for a whole week, and I got better, and then two weeks later, I got sick again, 
And so it's like, and, and of course this whole time we weren't sure if that I had COVID, cool. so I had to quarantine just to keep my parents protected because I was still living with them. I had to stay in quarantine for that whole week and stay in my room, so guess what I did that whole week is I pro mostly watched Critical Role <laughs> and I burned through campaign one. That's a lot of hours. But that's like my morning ritual now is I'll drink my coffee, I'll watch probably like an hour of Critical Role, and then I'll actually get up and be nice. try to be productive. <laughs> Do something with my life. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Fury? How do you... How? What's your morning ritual? Oh, man. Um, are you talking about days where I have to go to work or days where I don't have to go to work? <laughs> Both. Por que no los dos? On days where I have to go to work, my morning ritual is get up to the alarm. Yeah, get, grab my phone, bring it back to my bed, get back in bed, have Rika jump back onto the bed with me, Rika licks my face... A little bit, and then I roll her over on her back and give her some scritches. And then we both get up, because she wants to get up, and I go get her food. And then I go grab some breakfast, take my medication, if I have it, which I actually am out of it right now. I need to go and get my medication. <laughs> um, and then I get dressed, and I go to work probably late, because I laid on the couch, actually, for a good amount of time. <laughs> When I don't have to go to work, I try to remember to eat breakfast, <laughs> and then I just kind of hang out um, in my apartment. Either I watch a show. I don't know. I don't really have any routine for when I don't go to work, because it depends. Like, maybe I'm going over to hang out with my parents. It often really depends on what Rike is doing, <laughs> because if she wants to play, then I'm playing with her. If she wants to cuddle, then I'm probably scrolling through Instagram, or <laughs> maybe I'm writing. Maybe I'm playing Minecraft. <laughs> I don't know. I might be watching a movie on Netflix. Lately, that's what I've been doing. I've been er, watching TV shows, just trying to find, like, okay, does this interest me? Is this worth my time? No? Yes? I don't know. Let's find out. I mean, it's fair. Days off, it's, like, you don't really always need to have a routine. Get yeah. to do whatever. Or I guess, I guess also in my in my morning routines, generally, I try to lay in bed as long as I can before Micah really starts getting upset and wants me to feed her. <laughs> Um, and usually I'm on my phone catching up with anyone that texted me while I was sleeping. I let Rika take a nap with me wherever she wants, and she's currently falling asleep after second, third breakfast. Do we count that as second breakfast? Oh, I'm sorry. You can close your eyes again. You said second breakfast I'll leave you dessert? I'm thinking it was second breakfast. She had second breakfast, and then she was getting ready to fall asleep, and I was going to pet her, and she got confused and gave me a high five. So I... But I gave her a little dessert, and then I, I sprinkled the juice, because I gave her, like, tuna flakes that has have little tuna juice in it, too. So I was um, sprinkling the juice on the rest of her breakfast, and she was like, oh, I will eat that. And I'm like, was that a third breakfast or a second? Second? Still? Okay. And now she's sleepy again. Aww. She's happy that she gets to listen to me while she sleeps. Oh, cute. We should probably mention, like, what our purpose for this podcast is. Do we have a purpose? Do we have a, do, do we have a goal? I thought it was we were going to be talking about, like, our hobbies and crafts and crea creative um, endeavors. I mean, yeah. I was like, we just kind of do fun things together. Like, we do, we like to be idiots yeah. together. And sometimes we eat ice cream. <laughs> Not this time, though. <laughs> eat ice cream. Not this time, though. Not right yeah. now. Oh, no, I didn't have any ice cream. Like, if we wanted to do something like that, I have, like, a smoothie? <laughs> I have Oreos that I bought at the dollar store. That's about it. <laughs> We're poor these days. We don't well, buy things. I do have a bowl of- I do have Captain Crunch cereal. I can eat a bowl of cereal. <laughs> a very sugary cereal. <laughs> Are we just that old? I'm like I'm, I'm eating chocolates <laughs> as we go. I never lose the key to your childhood. Always be a child. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now we're going to violently throw questions at each other. Here, here, star. Here's a ninja star. Blech. Was I? I was saying, what was I? Oh, look. We were talking about... It we... has a question on it. It's, what first got you inspired to write? Oh, that's the question for me. What first got me inspired to write? Oh, God. Well, I started writing when I was eight, I think. I think that's, like, the very first, wow. like, piece of nonfiction I tried to write, and it was- I remember it so vividly. This is- I told you, I have a really weird memory with very specific things. I don't understand how my brain works. I have a very vivid memory of- I tried to write, like, an autobiography 
called Memories from the Heart, and I made, like, an opening page. I made, like, a cover in Microsoft Paint as an eight-year-old for this book that I was trying to write. I think the only story I told was, like, the story of going to my grandparents for Christmas, and it was just a really good memory that I wanted to keep. <laughs> yeah, that was when I was a kid, and so that's, like, the very first thing. When I was in middle school, I went through, like, a really big Jonas Brothers phase. I know I've told you about this. It was right after the first Camp Rock movie came out. I went through, like, I wrote this entire script for the sequel. Because they were, like, there were, there were rumors that there was going to be a second one. And I was, my 12-year-old self was just like, I'm going to write it. And then I did, and it never went anywhere. <laughs> I wrote a whole script, and then I did this thing where I, like, timed it out. I read it out loud with a timer, and I wrote a whole wow. two-hour script. Because I was insane. <laughs> and my mom just well, let me works. do it. Why not? Like, it doesn't harm anyone, and you're enjoying yourself, and perhaps it'll bring you to, like, what you become as an adult. Hey, yeah. look at where we are now. She was so chill about me using her computer to do it because I just I just had Microsoft Word open on her computer and I was just typing away. She'd That's come in every fun. once in a while. There were times she'd come in and she'd be like, are you coming down to eat? And I'm just like, what time is it? <laughs> I think that's where the uh, endless writing yeah. onslaught came from. Just like nonstop yeah. writing. You forget to eat. You forget what time it is. You lose track of time. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that would be a really good moment to like latch on to you as this is something that I want to continue to do with my life because like that would be described as either flow state or hyper focusing if you have ADHD or both <laughs> where it's like man I am really enjoying this moment so much that I don't even know anything else that exists outside of this moment like what I am currently doing and you're so connected to it and you're having so much fun doing it you get lost in it and so when, when you come out of that two hours later you're like what happened you want to go back to that state like you, it, you just crave to experience that again and again so I'm like yeah that could strike strike love at first sight yeah and I think I've just been writing ever since then so I mean obviously like you'll go through periods of time where you just can't write i well i don't know about you because i know you write a lot there no, are times I, I, that, that definitely happens i think anyone yeah. who's an artist has those times <laughs> yeah there are times like the the stories i'm working on now i abandoned them for like a solid year just because i was not in a headspace to write for a long time and i mean you know all about that i and i spent a lot of that time reading so that definitely helped writing was just couldn't happen for me at the time so yeah sometimes you just get into a funk even if you have, like, inspiration, even if you have, like, oh, I want to write, you just, sometimes you look at the screen and you're just, like, it's almost, like, painful to try because your brain is just not in the right place. Yeah, I have a lot of stories that I had started that maybe I finished the first chapter. I think I got, like, close to finishing the first chapter on one of them. <laughs> and, like, I have not come back to those stories. Like, I come back to those stories and I read them, like, yeah, I, I had the goal to, like, continue with this. But, like, I don't really want to. I don't really know what I want to do with this story. Or, like, I kind of know what I want to do with it, but there's a lot of work to get there or figure out, like, what even is the plot? What do I want to do with these characters? Actually, I hate these characters now, and I don't care about them, and I want to do something with this idea, but I can't figure out how to make it engaging enough for me to want to continue writing it. So those stories sit in, like, some notebook, probably on my bookshelf right now, just continuing to gather dust and wait for my idea to evolve enough. Maybe it will come to me in a dream. Some <laughs> random dream. I'm like, I haven't thought about that story for like 10 years. And suddenly I know exactly how to finish it. That's, that's actually happened to me. Like writing my screenplay. Like I've had dreams about things and I'm like, Ooh, that'd be fun to put in there. <laughs> yes. I miss that so much. When I was in high school writing, like this was when I was doing the first draft, and I'm a pantser, so I don't plan outlines or anything. I just write and make up as I go. So if that's one of the reasons why my actual book series that I continue to, that's what I've always been working on ever since I really started 
that was made up as I go along and I loved every bit of it. I never really became uninspired by it. I think it was because the characters and the plot and everything was actually something that I'm constantly interested in and I want to continue to explore or I have like an idea of like a scene that's going to happen later. I'm like, no, no, we are going to get to that scene. Let's get, let's keep going. But yeah, when I was in high school, just making things up as they go along, I would have dreams sometimes about scenes that could happen. And I'm like, this was so cool. I actually got to see my characters that I didn't have to like force myself to like write or anything. It just like came to me in a dream and I got to see them and like watch them interact with each other without me telling them what to say. That was so fun. I miss that. I don't get that anymore. Yay. So Fury, on that note, what got you into writing? Back at you. Question back at you. Was that actually one of your questions, or was no. that just back at me? No, because you said we're going to okay. do this. Well, so technically, I've been... We have Ladybug and Bee, that was written by me and my mom, illustrated by my mom. So 1999 was when we wrote that together. <laughs> and she says that I actually helped her write that. I don't remember. All I remember was sitting, like, I was standing next to her as we were writing, like, the words down. Um... I was at the piano, and I don't remember suggesting anything to her. Really, I remember her coming up with all of it, but she says that I fed her a lot of the ideas. I think she would ask me questions like, okay, what do you want Ladybug and Bee to do next? And I'm like, oh, they should play with a ball, (laughs) maybe. But So I've technically been in the storytelling world for a while because she wrote that book with me which someday perhaps I'll publish, but right now it's just sitting on my bookshelf like trophies because I'm like, these are things that I love. And then when I got my first cat, I want to say in first grade, we also wrote a story about the princess and her cat where she had me dress up as Cinderella. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. um, Something about how my cat Jasmine had... Got, she had run away or she got lost or something and oh no the princess was so worried and she had to go she looked everywhere she looked under her bed she looked outside the door and then like at the end of the story like you she hears this cat meowing and she's she's over in this little area and then we're, we're reunited and she took pictures of me the whole time and it's it's such an adorable thing so um those things were happening in my childhood but when I really personally got into writing was um whenever I had free time, would be playing with either my sister or my neighbors and friends or all of us together and my younger brother as well. And we'd go in the backyard and do basically, I didn't, we didn't know what it was called back then, but it was basically um, LARPing, so live action role play. (laughs) And my sister would come up with like the plot and her, the villain, and then we would be like the other like heroes or something. And she would also sometimes be a hero. Um, And so that was always like we would come up with like stories and like games and like plots and um, stuff like that. And then when they grew out of that, I was always like playing with stuffed animals and trying to create stories with that or do fan fictions that way. And then um, I started role playing online through text on Neopets. And one of the prompts for joining one of the role plays was like, okay, you're teleported to this world from wherever you are you can do any character you can make up your own character or use a character from like an actual um tv show or book series or anything anything is welcome and you're all just like teleported here and i'm like i want to make my own character because i always make my own characters and like i just came up with the idea for my my now main character in my books and the world that she would have come from which is different now because now she actually comes from the normal world and she's going to the magical world (laughs) Um, but I came up with that there and I was like, man, that was such a cool idea. Cause that role play didn't, that, <laughs> that text-based role play didn't go anywhere. We like maybe had a couple of posts and then I had to go to dinner and then it was gone. But I'm like, the idea is still there. Then that night I came up with the second character that was going to like tell her, Hey, like something. <laughs> what exactly in the, that early draft that I've edited since then. But I fell in love with that character and the, plot was evolving from there in my head and the world building was like just really fun for me so I was like you know I should write this down this time I should write down this this random idea that I have instead of just like acting it out in my room alone I'm gonna write it down so I grabbed a composition notebook and whatever writing utensil I could which was a sharpie which was a bad idea but (laughs) I was 13 and I just started writing the first page and then I still haven't stopped 
That was 2009, and I haven't stopped since then. Your hand has not, not once left that page. It is trapped in an endless cycle. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm on draft seven of that first book now, so I've oh written all four books for the series, like, handwritten, but um, I went back and I, I've typed the first book, I've edited it, I've gotten beta readers, um, I actually saw agents at one point, and um, <gasps> then I decided that I needed, I needed to do another revision, so that's kind of where we are now, I'm on draft seven, so no, Yee! I have not left that page. <laughs> so you're using this platform Even to fully promote yourself. Heck yeah. Yes! Even Heck though yeah. I have nothing to sell. Heck yeah. Hey, you know what? A lot of people don't, and that's totally fair. I have nothing to sell, yeah. so. I'm just having fun. I love to celebrate the um, art of writing, though. I love yeah. hearing about other people that get excited by it and are pursuing it. It's just so much fun to be involved with. Without spoilers, you don't get to know who dies oh my and gosh. who lives. They all die. No. That's it. They all die. <laughs> yeah, that's just the assumption. Everybody dies. Everybody lives. Both at the same time. Yes. Take that. Yeah, exactly. Take that whichever the way you want. The fourth book is just Schrodinger's characters. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yes. I'm going to pick this one because we're on the topic of writing. I'm going to say, what is a genre that you've never written in, but you would like to? Oh. That's not fair. That's a good question. <laughs> Interesting. Yours was a good question. Shush. Yeah, but that's a really nice one. Um, man, I've never thought about that. <laughs> Usually I just pursue whatever I want, but I guess I would say possibly science fiction because I'm mm -hmm. definitely fantasy minded. I love to explore magic and all of that kind of stuff, but I also enjoy a lot of the things that science fiction can do. But I don't think that I have, I've never really experimented myself going into science fiction. I don't know if I would do well at least at first of course after a while you know you learn some you make some mis mistakes and you learn from them yeah that would be a really interesting genre to explore um it's basically the same as fantasy just with the science aspect but still it has it answers different questions and explores things at a different angle that is really interesting as well so yeah, yeah. What genre would you like to try to write in and that you haven't yet? I would love to try to write a good mystery. I've never written a mystery before, but I love reading mystery. So I think that would be really fun. Uh -huh. I have no idea what I would write. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the thing is I have no idea what it would be, but like murder, I love murder yep. mysteries, like playing murder mysteries, watching murder mysteries. Like that is my jam. So I'm just like writing it probably would also be really fun. I've just never really had a proper idea. So, yeah. Nice. Let's see. So my second question. Oh, no. If money weren't a problem, oh. what would you do with your time? So, like, if you don't need to get a job or you are financially stable, what would you do with your, with your time? So we're not talking, like, if I just suddenly had a million dollars, right? This is just, like, if I lived in a world where money was not an issue. Yeah, so probably more of, like, if not you were granted the money, but somebody else were able to take care of you, like, n you never had to worry about having enough money to do something. If Okay, if I just had, like, an infinite loop of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this is a fantasy, but, you know, go with it. <laughs> a very hypothetical scenario. Okay. I mean, I would definitely want to live one of those lifestyles of, like, just doing whatever I could to give back, but also, like, simultaneously doing everything that I want to do while also giving back. Basically what I wish every billionaire would do, but they don't. <laughs> um, like, you know, still getting to live the lifestyle you want. And personally, I don't, I don't want to live in luxury. Like, I don't want to live in a big house because big houses just are very overwhelming. I don't need a lot of space. I don't think I want a lot of space. I kind of like my little, I like my little apartment. I like living here. It's nice. I don't know. I think I wouldn't change the kind of lifestyle I have. Maybe just make certain things a little bit more convenient, like transportation or, but honestly, that's kind of more up to like donating money to the subway systems and making them more functional. I don't know, like something like that, but... <laughs> make them less blinding when they pass by your apartment. I mean, I'd probably just move to a different apartment, or I'd just, like, get, like, what is that, tinted windows or something? Pay to get tinted windows? Yeah, that's expensive. I would run my own cat sanctuary. You know what? No. 
<laughs> oh man. I mean, obviously I would I would pursue my dreams. I would like write the show. I would write my screenplay, get it produced, get like my dream cast to perform in it. I'd pay them whatever money they want. Yeah. What yeah, about? that's a pretty good answer. Not really. I I think I was expecting more of something like, um, would you continue working or something? But no, that was really good. I'm like, okay, well, my response now, after hearing your answer, my response has changed. Yes, I will use all of the money to fix the world. <laughs> yeah, I think I would also do something very similar. Um, definitely trying to help out in different areas. Like, if, if it weren't with money, like, maybe it's not my money necessarily it's just money that's making me able to survive and i can't give it to other people but i would still use my um essence my my ability like my um presence i guess and energy and effort to try to make the world better safer yeah. nicer um because i finally have the money like i agree like i don't want a big house or anything i always vision envisioned myself in like an apartment and i really do like my apartment um, I think the only thing I would probably change is get a slightly bigger one so that I could have at least two cats so they can entertain <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The cat sanctuary. Let's do that. <laughs> yes. That's that's our dream. We just we open a cat sanctuary together. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's do that. If neither that's of us, what we're going to do. If neither of us are married by the time we're 50, we just do a marriage and convenience and we also run a sanctuary together. That's... <laughs> we are the crazy cat ladies. We really are. <laughs> Okay, we have we have two courtyards. One of them is the cat sanctuary, and the next door is the dog sanctuary. Yes, absolutely. On the subject of us opening a on on the subject of us opening cat sanctuary together, here's a very important question for you, Fury. Do you believe that cats will take over the world? Huh, are yeah. we sure we ha they haven't already? I mean, like. Jokingly, that would be the answer, but um, seriously, unfortunately, no. Aww. I'll be depressing. The humans have taken over the world. We are in the Anthropocene era where humans are a force of nature, and we really need to be responsible with what we're doing. And it's dangerous, like, if you are breeding. Like, that's one of the reasons why you're supposed to be neutering and spaying your pets, like, especially cats, because they do like to hunt for play if they're well fed they'll still go out and hunt and kill things which really upsets the natural order of like the surrounding area so unfortunately like we do need to like also be a force of nature towards the pets and the animals um we just need to be responsible with how we're doing it so unfortunately no <laughs> now if i were a cat then yes yes we are taking over the world and um <laughs> you should be worried <laughs> does 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 Rika think you're too, that we're that they're taking over the world well Rika's dreaming well no she's not dreaming she's just sleeping right now so i don't know <laughs> i don't know if she cares i think she just well, no, she, I guess, specifically does care. And it's not that the cats are taking over the world. Her worry is which cats are taking over the world. <laughs> she doesn't important. care if her species wins. She, care, she cares about what part, which, which particular cats of her species wins. If cats were going to take over the world, would it really be so bad? I mean... Uh, yes. Very probably. <laughs> I've, make I've seen, I've met several cats, and I think that if you had, you would also agree. I feel like there's a movie out there, there about that somewhere. All right. So whose turn is it? It's your turn for question. Okay, my third question, or actually, to stay on the theme of animals. Oh no, I'm scared. <laughs> Let me skip. Let's go to question five for me. That is, if you were any animal... What would you choose to be? Arctic fox. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's like, for one, they're freaking beautiful creatures. And two, I love the cold. I I mean, I say I love the cold. I like colder weather more than hot. Because I don't like being sweaty when I'm just trying to exist. Yeah, but Arctic foxes are beautiful creatures. They're gorgeous. Um, they live in cold climates. What I, oh my gosh, I love this about them when it's summer. Their fur, like changes colors i don't believe you i'm looking that up now yeah because it's like because then they camouflage in the winter to hide from predators right isn't that a thing that is so cool i mean that would make sense i've i, I know that that that's always why i thought their skin their skin their skin was white oh it tells it shows me pictures of them like in mid transformation that is so cool 
Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like brown. Apple. Okay, so it's, it's not black. It's like brown. It's like dark brown. Is what they turn. I don't know. I love them. They're and they're so floofy. Yeah, that is cute. They're so gorgeous. Okay, so Fury, what animal would you be if you could be anything? Oh, my answer is usually like I was gonna I was gonna say cat, but I'm also torn because I'm like I always want to be able to fly. So Ooh. I want to be a cat with wings. Can that be a thing? <laughs> What, I was saying, what's Maybe like, I'll be a bat. What's, oh my god, yes, be a bat. And I was like, what's the equivalent of, like, a cat, but it's also... That's, that's also make high-pitched noises, which is super true to me. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess I would end up being a bat in the end. You could be a fruit <laughs> bat. Yeah. <laughs> so you could live in a cave, you could hang upside down and sleep. Which I do enjoy hanging upside down. I have one of my questions is, describe the origin story behind your kitty's name. Rika, yes. Um, well, because oftentimes, like, I think I went to her vet, and they would ask, like, well, what's the backstory? Because usually, like, pets with d strange names, or even normal names, they have some, like, weird, fun backstory, and I'm like, no, it's not, like, a really cool, it's not, she's not, like, named after any, like, famous character or anything. It's literally just, like, you know, I told you that I, like, when I was growing up, I always did live-action role plays in the backyard with my, my family and friends. And so I also told you, like, when I was role-playing online, I always like to make up my own characters. So that's also what I did in live-action role-plays. So I would always make up a new character for every game that we played. And it, I had different names that I would choose from. Sometimes I would make up a whole new one on the spot, or I would use one from that I had already made that I liked. And um, Kiraika was one of my favorite names. Um, so her full name is technically Kiraika. And then... But I also know that pets, when you're training them, or um, in general, they respond or understand, like, two-syllable names best. So I was like, whatever I name her needs to be more of a two-syllable name. She was going to be Kiri, but it just didn't fit her personality. She definitely needed something with more spunk. So um, it's now, it was it was going to be Kiri and Fury. Yeah, it was going to be so cute. Aww. But no, she's now Rika. And it, her, um, Kirika... But she also has so many nicknames. Um, she she <laughs> looks like an Eevee, which Eevee is one of my favorite um, Pokemon. So she and I'm also I cosplay as a Pokemon breeder that um, specifies in Eevees. So it really works. She's already dressed up as her as her Pokemon cosplay. Um, <laughs> so she's my little Eevee. She also like her tail randomly twitches all the time. So <laughs> her name is also Twitchy. When she was a kitten, she would often pee on her paw and have to, like, clean it up. <laughs> Please don't walk anywhere with that. So her name is also Pee Paw. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She, is, she, she, she gets new nicknames every day. <laughs> it sounds like an old man. Like, what you call your grandpa is, like, a joking nickname. Oh, oh she's also, because her tail twitches, and she oft, sometimes she gets, like, really excited. And so she's also a squirrel. She's my squirrel. She has weird sounds that she makes. Um, that her meow. I don't think she knows how to meow because she <laughs> does every other sound that she can do. She so she sounds like a pigeon sometimes. She acts like a squirrel sometimes. Um, she sometimes I think she thinks she's a dog. <laughs> yeah, I love cats. Maybe that are even like a that. mouse. No, I've I've literally said like I have met this cat. I swear to God, she, like, you must have birthed this cat, because the sound she makes. I did. Sounds that she likes to make. She doesn't meow, she squeaks, and it's adorable. And she chirps with the X, and yes. She does! It's so cute! And it's like, sometimes it sounds exactly like the fun sounds that you like to make. And it's just like, oh my God, she literally is your baby. Yes, and anymore, I'm like, I'm not sure if this is something that I did before I had you, or if you influenced me to start making these noises, right? I don't know. You like to work with a lot of different kind of writing and art forms. You've done tap dance. You've done, um, have you done ballet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you did ballet, too. You love acting and theater. You do improv. You love writing. You do um, mm -hmm. short stories. You're working on a fan fiction. You've done screenplays mm -hmm. and just plays in general. So <laughs> I pose to you, what is your favorite art form to work with? Oh, man, that, that likes to vary, um, depending on, I mean, it depends on the time of year, depends on my headspace. 
Um, currently, it's just writing. Mm. Like, that's just been my big focus lately is, mm. like, writing and video editing because I'm really mm. trying to get back into YouTube again. I'm really in-depth mm. working on Dance of the Fireflies mm. and, and also on Smaller Than Small Talk, mm. but I'm, I have a personal goal set for mm. Dance of the Fireflies. Like, I want to get it done, done. Mm. I'm focusing on that because I want to meet that goal, and I'm also putting that goal out online, so I want to hold myself to it. Um, yes. <laughs> and I, I feel like also taking a break from Smaller Than Small Talk, I've been able to, like, kind of just distance myself from it, come back into it with a fresh mind. Certain, like, certain things going on around me, like, I'll take notes and I'll be like, ooh, I might want to incorporate that into, like, Maybe one of my character's traits, or like something about my character's backstory, or maybe this is something that happens in the show. I don't know. <laughs> so writing is like my biggest thing right now, just because like that's. I mean, first of all, that's the one thing I really have easy access to right now. Acting, obviously, like that's not really happening right now. But uh, I would love to do it <laughs> if I could. But writing is the one thing I think I can never live without, honestly, because it's just something that's a part of me. Everything else comes and goes, depending on where I'm at in life, depending on where my headspace is, but writing is something that will always be with me, and writing is something that I will always have access to doing, so I think that's part of it, but it's also just something I feel like I need, because writing for me is basically yeah. free therapy. <laughs> yeah, I was say, it's very therapeutic, it's very nice. Of course, all art forms are, mm -hmm. but I think writing is... It being so accessible, like, anyone can start writing anywhere as long as you have something to write with. No, yeah, I think you would have to... <laughs> I'm like, no, even even if you're just, like, writing a fan fiction in your mind, but still, it's not quite as effective as actually writing it down on, like, a computer or on paper or something. So, yeah, it is, like, really accessible, and it's uh, very therapeutic, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, your favorite art form would be writing, but what kind of writing? would you is your favorite to work with um all of them um i don't know because because <laughs> there are like new concepts i'm coming up with all the time because it's like yeah i recently discovered audio fictions which i was like i should have known about these before because it's like very similar to audio books no. podcasts welcome to night vale like that's an audio fiction and i'm like I, I recently stumbled across which i can't believe i just now found this because i watched markiplier for years it's the edge of sleep it's an audio drama that he is, like, the main character in. It was really good. It was a really cool concept. It was very well done. And I really liked it to the point that I was like, oh, my gosh, I need to find more things like this. And I found out, like, audio dramas, like... Well, really, though, it's it's kind of just a revamping of radio dramas. Because right. that, thing, that kind of concept has existed for ages. Exactly. It's just now it's all and on, now it's like, streaming services. And it's coming back in, in a new format with um, a lot more accessible tools, I guess. Yeah, now it's just on streaming services because radio is kind of slowly, slowly petering out. Radio kill radio <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, kind of. Okay, huh. so what about you, I would, I would have to... Oh, favorite art for... I'm like, what was the question again? <laughs> um, yes, mine... I walked away from my computer, so I'm not staring at the question anymore. I'm like, I don't remember what I asked you. Yeah, I think mine is always going to be fantasy novels. I just love working with that medium. There's so much room to world build and expand on. And it's not just novels, I guess. I love ser expansive series. One of the things I love about Lord of the Rings is that it's not just those books. It's also The Hobbit, it's also The Cimmerillion, it's so much world building and stories around the stories that are actually, even though Tolkien didn't necessarily publish all of them when he was able to, he didn't like really polish, finish any of them, but they were there, they were being formed, they exist, so I love that. Um, in my books, I have the four book series, but I also have like the whole history of the world worked out and I have stories that would happen like in the past as well that lead to this different like scientific discoveries that um, create little things that you'll that you can see in the first book series that I'm going to write I have um, a book series planned for after this book series is done I have short stories all around it I love working with um, I guess expansive fantasy series world building that is it just goes all over the place. You can cover so many different things and where all different stories and ideas can just live and breathe together. I love that. 
I might make this my last one okay. just because. What is your favorite memory of being outdoors? Okay, well, that is going to make me have to think. <laughs> I knew it. I know at least one of mine, and you were there, so. Yay. Oh, is it going to be the eclipse? No, actually, but that was a really good time, too. Interesting. That was a good time. Um, most of them are going to be, when I was in high school, I had nature trails behind where I lived. Um, and at that time I had my dog Dino as well, and I got to go on walks with him, and I would always walk out into the nature trails, and I'd go to, there were two different spots, there was the bridge that went right over the creek, and there was also a little off the cement, off the sidewalk trail that, um, would lead more into the foresty area, and there was, like, this little secret area that also had a little bit of, like, I think it was, like, a broken bridge that used to be there or something, but it was, like, cement and rocks that were kind of broken up, and, like, they just kind of fell into the water, and I like to sit at the very edge of that with um, my dog, as well as over by the bridge, the actual <laughs> bridge of the creek, and we just, I would either sit there and write or read or just, like, kind of meditate. Um, really what I was doing was I was... Um, watching for snakes because sometimes there would be snakes that would go over the water and I could Ooh. just watch them slither by um and that was like my the highlight if like I could I, um that day I would see a snake slithering by it's like ha I have good luck this day <laughs> so I loved being able to sit there and with my dog he would just kind of hang out with me too I think he enjoyed it as well so those are some of my most fond memories of being outside oh that's so cool yeah and you my favorite memory with you out when we were outside. This I'm assuming is, is it is it the um the um gosh the meteor shower? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh wait, we, no, that was really cool too. That was, that was so many. That was fun. Literally, like the what was it? The it was a Geminid meteor shower, and we had driven out to a little area. Oh, you're um, thinking of that one. Parking. I was thinking of uh -oh. the I was thinking of our camp out. Oh my gosh. No. That actually was also really fun. Oh my god. We have so many fun memories going outside together. No, I was thinking of like this is more funny than like anything like fond like that I had with the girls. This was just funny. Like you coming out for my birthday to see the meteor shower at, mm -hmm. and Oh. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> our tent was what? Yeah, you woke me up. It was like 2 a.m. or something, and I had fallen asleep somehow. And you're like, um, hey, there's water in our tent. Look, there's water, and it's rising. Uh, <laughs> and so we shouldn't sleep in this. No, we got, I remember, yeah, we got up and went up to the camper, and I, I, think, it, I think it was unlocked, or maybe it wasn't. I knocked on the door. I was like, hello, parents. Our tents are flooding. We need yeah. to come inside. <laughs> It was so late, and we were like, I don't, yeah. I think I hesitated. I was, like, looking at it, I'm like, do I really want to have to get up and move everything? Do I really want to give up that effort? Or maybe I can just, like, we can wait it out. Maybe it's fine. There was a whole puddle in our tent. I was like, oh, my God. There was so much, yeah. Yeah, that was funny. That was crazy. I think, I think part of me was hoping that you would be like, Nah, it's fine. We'll ignore it. And then I'm like, good, I go back to sleep. I don't want to sleep in water. No thanks. I know. Like, it's a bad idea. We really shouldn't. But I don't <laughs> want to have to do things. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you could have any power in the world, like magic power or anything, like you can fly or you can control a certain element or you can shapeshift whatever, what would you prefer to have? My original go-to would be to, like, be invisible, but I'm just like... I don't know. That seems, like, too simple. But it's, like, sometimes when I'm walking down the street, I feel like that would also be a good, like, protective measure. Especially, like, as a young woman living in the city. If there's anywhere I have to mm. walk at night by myself, like, to be invisible would probably save me, like, any genuine fear of being followed, being creeped on. The idea of being invisible would be, like, that... Being able to feel a little bit safer knowing that no one can see me so no one would follow me. And I honestly, I haven't had that happen. As far as I am aware, I have not had that happen to me. So, yeah, I also try to be very vigilant about, like, looking behind me um, just to make sure. And it's like, I hate that I live in a society. I hate that we live in a society where that's like, we do that.
because we feel like we have to, because we sometimes we do. And it's sad, but it's true. Yeah, so I think that would just make me feel more comfortable, but also, like, sometimes I just want people to leave me alone. And to be completely invisible, that would make things so much easier. That's true. <laughs> like, how could they, like, bother me if they don't even know I'm there? Okay, Fury, so what about you? I, I, I lied, I actually have one more question for you, but it's kind of a quick one. But yeah, so what about you? My favorite power, I guess, I've... I, I stick to my childhood. Um, I've always wanted to be able to fly. Yeah. Like, there was one time where I had a dream where I was able to fly, and the feeling of it was just so amazing that I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to continue to be able to do that. That would be so cool. It's so much fun. I'm sure, like, it, after it was, like, just a common, just a power that I have, it become kind of mundane and normal, but I think... Uh, you know, you still, it's kind of like with writing, like, sometimes it becomes just normal to you, you do it all the time, it's just, like, part of who you are, but then you look back on it every once in a while, you pause, and you're like, no, this is like a really magical thing that I get to do, I'm so happy that I get to have this, I think that's what flight would be for me, like, I still get to enjoy being able to just go wherever I want, however high or fast that I want, and just be free, and then if I weren't able to do flight, then I would definitely do water bending. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to be able to control water. Um, that was my question. You had another question. Okay, this is my last one. This is probably, like, a quick, easy one. What is your favorite scent? That's not easy. How dare you? I mean, it's just, it's just like, a single answer. I mean... I think I'm scent-challenged. I've never really... Okay, so, like, that's something to talk about, too. Oftentimes, and especially romance novels, you have people saying, like, oh, he smelled like this scent, or he smelled like leather, or um, woodworking, and I'm like, I, I don't notice scents about people. That <laughs> I don't, that's something that I noticed when I started writing, I'm like, all right, and then my, my male character, okay, what does she smell when he meet, when she meets him, or whatever, <laughs> they, like, they get into contact again, what does she smell, because men apparently always smell like something, let's see, <laughs> so I actually did a little bit of, like, studying, like, Okay, well, what scents are even exist? Let me see. What what scents are out there? Do I ever smell anything? <laughs> That's so I funny. I, my nose works perfectly fine. I just have ADHD <laughs> and I, I'm neurodivergent, so I'm like, I don't think I like notice scents that as as much as maybe maybe a neurotypical person. I don't know <laughs> because I'm like like I, I don't I don't know what is my favorite scent. I don't pay attention to very much other than like you know food that's so funny because okay. like they're there oh my gosh I I'm... can say food can I just say food, food. yes oh, okay 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 this may not be like my favorite but it's a notable scent Rika. whenever she's f freshly taken a bath Aww. she smells like love she smells like happiness healthiness and love those are my favorite scents there I can be abstract okay your turn <laughs> Okay, mine mine's kind of sappy and a little sentimental. I think one of my I mean, favorite. I mean, was mine not? I mean, it's fair. <laughs> um, I think one of my favorite scents. It's very specific. It is when I was living at home. The smell that would come up to my room whenever my mom was cooking curry, because it makes the whole house smell of curry, and it is the best thing. I love the smell mm. of curry being cooked. Yes. Like I said, food scent. <laughs> Just in general, food. So Are it's you like... telling me, Star, that your mom is like a bartender, but with food? Oh my god. Like a chef? She is a bartender with food, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna live that down. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about here, or what, oh what Fury's talking about, if you have no idea what was just referenced... Anyone who's watching a video, <laughs> look at the link over here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll say... It, we'll, it, we'll link it in the bio of this episode. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> um... It was Idiots with Ice Cream. I don't know what episode it was, It was... Though. I think it was episode one of Idiots with Ice Cream. I'm sorry. I typed in Idiots with Ice Cream on to just the search of YouTube, and we're actually the fourth... Nope, the fifth um, thing that comes up, and I just saw there are auto-generated chapters in this video, apparently. Yeah, so we have the intro, and then seven seconds into it, it's called Sunday Call. 
And then one minute what? and 55 seconds, it's called Party. And then two minutes and 27 seconds into it, it's called Magic. <laughs> Wait, what episode this is, is the this? We were doing the book challenge. Oh! Huh? This is episode three. What? Oh, and then we have Lunch. And then we have Family Council. <laughs> Deer Season. <laughs> And then we have emergency, which I'm making like a weird face in the thumbnail, like <laughs> a concerned face, and you're laughing. And after emergency, we have heart practice. <laughs> what? <laughs> then the scarecrow, then Ooh. blackouts, what? the woods, the light, no cheers, and the very last one is called, we are all gonna die. <laughs> So now I know what the titles of the chapters of my new book is going to be for this new mystery book I'm going to write. <laughs> that last chapter, like, dang, that's actually, like, good chapter for ending something, I guess. I remember that part, too, just how funny that was. We're all going to die. You mean you want that, too? <laughs> I don't remember this. What do you, what, wait, you remember this, this word? Oh. Because it was just so freaking <laughs> funny. Oh, we need to do that again. That's hilarious. So, my last question. Okay. Here we is, go. Is, what are your goals for the new year? Finish Dance of the Fireflies is definitely the big one. I want to at least get more in depth with Smaller Than Small Talk. I, I don't know if I feel like I have to finish it this year. I'd like to get as far in it as I can. Because, you know, no time like the present. I think it's safe to say that I want to stay in New York. Just continue to take care of my body better. Because, like, physically I feel so much better. <laughs> from just, like, having to yeah. be... Like, being forced to exercise just to go up and down the stairs to go home to my apartment is really nice. That was something really useful about when you lived in the dorms. When we had to go up all the stairs to get to our room. Or even when, like our second apartment when we moved up to the top floor like we had no choice but to like walk up two flights we're taking right, yeah. care of ourselves I think a caveat to the question what are goals from last year that you actually that you managed to accomplish this year move to new york i mean that was the big one <laughs> yeah you did that was like a five-year goal uh that was a 12-year goal to be actually quite specific yeah it's so weird to think that this is, like, actually what's happening is, I did it, I moved, I moved to New York. Because it's, like, my life is different, obviously. But, like, I'm still me? I guess I don't know what I expected when, like, for me to change when I moved? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm still yeah, myself. You do become a new person. I think for my goals for the this coming year, it's very similar to yours. I think we're, we're asking, um fellow novelists what your goals are so you can assume what they will be <laughs> um mine is definitely going to be finish my second book i already have it technically written but i am re i'm typing it up and so oh my gosh it's been such a slog i've had to title it dumpster fire um <laughs> actually yeah it was i i at one near the end i had titled because i got so annoyed with it i had to make i made a new copy because like i had things going on, so I made a new copy and titled it, Listen Up, Dumpster Fire Weed. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, listen up. We're gonna do this. Also, um, also, you are a dumpster fire trash thing. I don't even know. And you know what? We're just gonna have fun with you. We're just gonna, like, make you complete. And it's been a slog even with that mindset. So, I, my goal is to finish that book. I am on, like, the final, uh, we're getting ready for the final fight, and then we'll have the final fight chapter, and then we'll have the resolution. So really, I only have like three chapters left, so you would think that Yay. I could get this done relatively quick, but man, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to finish this draft of the second book, and then I'm going to go back to the first book, review all of the beta reads that had happened during the last um, time when I sent it out, and then decide what I'm going to do with those. And that's either that I'm going to do some edits and stuff, fix some things, or I'm just going to leave everything as it actually is and accept all of the different, like, concerns or problems that I've tried to fix that I haven't been able to fix yet and just go and seek agents. 
So I'm going to finish Yay. this book and then decide what I'm doing with the first book. You got Those this. Are my goals. Do you have anything that you set for this year that you did accomplish? Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. I moved into my own apartment. Um, I got a new job. I have a lot of free time, so I get to actually write, which has been a struggle for several years to actually have free time to write alongside getting paid to be allowed to live. <laughs> Yay! So I accomplished getting a job that pays decently well, but also gives me time to take care of my mental health. And I live in an apartment by myself, which I have found that living on my own is probably the ideal situation for me. Um, so, yeah, those are things that I accomplished, and I'm very pleased. <laughs> I yeah. am crawling out of the dark the dark storm that I was sent in I don't know how long. Yeah, man, you've had a pretty rough history with roommates, that's for sure. Especially the ones you lived yeah. with for yeah, a long time. Yeah, there was time. one person, oh my gosh, in college. Like, I think she was actually my last roommate in college, and she she always did my dishes for me. I mean... Word on the street is that you liked to do her dishes for her, too, so, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I was payback, trying to give her a taste of her own medicine. So in a test, after all of this, to test how well we really know each other, especially because, oh my god, have we known each other for ten years? Huh? I stopped counting. I'll say, yeah, 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 ten years, oh my gosh. Um, as, as two people who have been friends for ten years, let's see how well we actually know each other after all this. So we're gonna do... Just a quick rapid fire round. I don't know if it's rapid fire. It's just one single round of two truths and yeah. a lie. All right. Does that mean, should I go first then? You may. Okay. Fury, you, you've known me to be a huge Zelda fan. Have been for many yes. years. So, but you know about my hyperfixation, but let's see how well and in depth you know about it. So, two truths and a okay. lie. Two of these are true and one is absolute bullcrap. Link was my very first crush when I was a kid. Breath of the Wild is my favorite Zelda game, and I have never played Twilight Princess. Uh huh. Well, obviously, okay, listen, the first one is true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's supposed to be a trick question, because I'm like, well, you may not have been your first, but I'm pretty sure I have heard you say several times that he was your first crush. So I believe that one is true. Okay. I don't know if you have actually played Twilight Princess. Okay, then I don't I don't think that Breath of the Wild is your favorite, then. I think the Ocarina of Time is your favorite. You are absolutely right, I'm yes. Wrong. I'm right! Yeah, yeah I'm Ocarina right. of Time. Ocarina of Time, it's not only my favorite Zelda game, it's my favorite video game, like, period. I love Ocarina of Time for nostalgia, and just because it's just a fun game, man. For its time, it is amazing. So... Mine are not themed. Mine are just my life. <laughs> <laughs> First one is, I did not only buy presents for my cat this for Christmas this year, meaning I did buy presents for other people, too. Um, number two is, I wanted to dye my hair red when I was younger. And then number three is, I have seen a hummingbird in real life. Oh, man. My instincts, just because of the wording, I think is the first one, the lie. You did just buy presents for your cat. No, actually. <laughs> I hope the wording would throw you off. I bought mostly presents for my cat, but I did manage to buy presents for everyone else in my family as well. <laughs> so, wait. Is it the last one? Is it the hummingbird one? Nope. I have actually managed to see a hummingbird in real life as well. Oh, so you never wanted to and dye your hair red? experience. Correct. I wanted to dye my hair black. Oh, I can see that. Yep, I wanted... I love the goth look, but I didn't want to go full goth. I just liked a lot of the aesthetics. So, um, that, I, I loved black hair, and I wanted to have, like, the really nice straight black hair. And then in theater, theater one day, I don't remember what play I was in, but someone was do, um, doing my hair, and they were like, wow, have you ever dyed your hair? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And they're like, I can tell. You have natural highlights in there that people who dye their hair, they don't get. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess then I'm never going to ever dye my hair. Because that means <laughs> I have a super special secret quality. Have you and ever... that was the moment when my dream to dye my hair black died. Have you never dyed your hair, Fury? I have never dyed my hair. When I was younger, huh. I did get um, highlights in my hair. Um, I don't. I think I don't think they were blonde highlights. They were just like 
lighter brown because I have I have I don't know if you call this light brown but it's like not a dark brown it's brown hair long brown hair we got highlights one time when I was younger and they had probably grown out by the like I think I was like what 12 so um this the when I was in theater that would have been when I was like maybe 15 so I think the highlights had grown out by then so I had just natural like sun highlights basically Winnie catchphrase. The end. Insert winning catchphrase, and we're done. I mean, what? I mean, oh, we... we could just do. We could just do um more uh mildly concerned caveman. <laughs> <laughs> mildly concerned caveman exiting the room. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to say goodbye and mildly concerned. <laughs> 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 oh, that'd be great. Here, here. <laughs> was that a car horn? No, that was my door closing. Oh. Here. <laughs> there you Here, go. Let me try a different door. Here, I'm just gonna open and close the door. Get some good clips here, cause audio. <laughs> Ringo is so confused. Poor boy, he's just sleeping on the bed or on the chair, and he's just looking up like, "What are you doing?" Left my room and Rika is glaring at me from the window. She's like, "Why are you opening and closing the room where I eat and sleep? What are you doing?" Sorry, Rika. I'll stop. I'll Poor stop. Kitties. The kitties are confused. <laughs> and this has been Starcrossed Losers. Hey. Thanks for listening. We did an episode. We did a thing. How how do you say thank you for listening in caveman? <laughs> Fury says, thanks so much for listening. <laughs> it's like this, this bank question at the end. That's for you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what you think they said. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to interpretation. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Anybody who is taking the time to uh, bless their ears with our chaos. Um, we will hopefully be no, back very right. soon. Happy, <laughs> happy 2024. Hey, may we all have... May this year be good to you, like... The world's a crazy place. It's a rough time to be alive sometimes. So may this year be good to you. You be good to you. Do what you can. Because life is not really under your control, except for the times when it is. Figure what those are. Yeah. And then <laughs> take care of yourself. I guess this is us signing out. <coughs> are you dying? And then I died. <laughs> I guess this is us signing out. Yeah. She dies in the background. <laughs> <laughs>